Uh, we are here to convince you that automated governance information belongs in Backstage, and we want to share our learnings with you on how easy it can be using plugins to centralize compliance information in the Backstage developer portal. Automated governance isn't necessarily new, but has it been, or has its results been easily accessible and visible to those needing to make use of that information for decision making? We have taken the approach that automated governance results for the software delivery lifecycle should have a place in Backstage, since Backstage is already used for cataloging and looking up information about repositories. My name is Amber Beasley. I'm from Leatrio, and this is Daniel. Hello. Uh, yeah, we're both uh, senior developers at uh, Leatro. We do uh, consulting work, and we have deployed a few different backstage uh, deployments. And this was one of the plugins that we were asked at one point to do, and uh, we made it. Let's go from there. So why, why compliance, and why is it a nightmare? Um, you're developing something at your company. You need to get it all set make sure it's ready for production use, and you go to release it and you get told, wait, have you done everything you're supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Well, there's this checklist. Well, I guess we won't be going to prod today. Um, that's compliance in a non-automated fashion. Uh, auto governance, we're talking about taking those steps of what you're supposed to do and turn those into automated steps. Uh, we'll be taking a look here in a moment at a pipeline where we will go through those steps, create proof that the necessary uh, tests and checks are taken care of, and then uh, store those in a trustworthy location. Um, you may have heard in the past that you need to, um, sorry, look at my notes here, um, that you should be trusting but verify. But we want to shift this to trusting the verification. You know it's trustworthy out there. You can just accept it because it has passed these tests. So with automation, uh, we're going to go through that pipeline. We're going to take a look at uh, what checks we're performing on this example pipeline. Uh, we're going to show what policy enforcement can be done against those checks uh, through a centralized policy system and what the format of those results are. And then we're going to show you what the status is. This is how auto governance basically works. Uh, on the left of this graphic, you'll see a developer makes a commit. That push goes into your repository. In our case, we're using GitHub today. Uh, it creates uh, a commit that is going to go through a whole pipeline. We've got the uh, security scan, hopefully you're doing some form of security scan. We're gonna build that image, and we're even gonna run a unit test. I hope you have a unit test. Um, we're going to take all of those, and as each step is uh, completed, we're going to create an attestation, is the general term for that. Uh, another way you could think of it is a receipt. Something that says, yes, I did these things, and I have a verified signature to say uh, that was done. Uh, after that, further to the right, you'll see that we run some policy checks. So we have a centralized compliance policy database. And so uh, those are written in OPA, uh, Open Policy Association. That sounds right. Uh, uh, format. And so we're going to uh, take those policies, run those against the uh, test to make sure that we follow all of the policies, and then we're going to uh, view the result. After that, we create a release. Now, in most pipelines, we're actually gonna create a release whether it passes everything or not. This may be a development build and you don't anticipate it going to production. Uh, it may be a, a, a development build you didn't expect could go to production, but it passed all the tests and now you're ready for prod. Uh, or it could be a build that you're specifically building for production and you'll release it. All right. Yeah, so what are these policies for? What are we checking? Uh, we don't want developers to have to 
write up or manually answer questions about how compliant their workflow was when they created any given release. We can automate that burden of proof. We can write policies to check that they have ran those security scans, they did the quality checks, like license requirements and more. Uh, it's really a win-win. You're set up to make less mistakes and you get proof for not making any mistakes. Uh, so what does that really look like in a real GitHub pipeline? We're going to switch into a live demo mode. Very exciting. Uh, which way is it? Go right or left. For, left. Yes, just for this one. There we go. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So here we're going to take a look at that demo repo I mentioned before. So this is a Hello World app. I'm sure you've seen those before. Uh, this is a Docker image we're going to uh, create as part of our build pipeline. If you'll jump in there. We'll take a look at one of the latest uh, build pipelines here. And you can see what you've probably seen before, a uh, GitHub pipeline that does one thing after another after another. Here we're going to stop and take a look at some of these uh, steps for the test, though. Can you pull one of those up a little bit? Uh, you can see on this, sorry, it's a little hard to see from the side. Uh, you can see that we have some attestation uh, steps going on as part of each of these uh, scans. And so we are creating those attestations with it. Further to the right, uh, we'll start doing the verification. So here is a step where we're actually going to perform the uh, OPA verification, make sure all of the attestations that were created to the left are valid, and then we're going to go through to the release. That release is going to uh, result in uh, artifacts that you're familiar with. So you'll end up with uh, some of your Docker uh, image signatures and those sorts of things. But as part of this, you'll end up with these attestations being created uh, above. So you can actually click into each of those and see the signature that was generated for that step. Um, and then uh, at the bottom here, you can see a policy evaluation that was run against those signatures. And in our case, we're very happy to say it passed. All right, so here, another view of the artifacts. So this is our latest release that came through that pipeline. Uh, and here you can see, an, again, a number of the different uh, normal artifacts. But one of the artifacts here we have is called results. This is actually what the OPA agent, when it runs the uh, policy file, uh, will output. And this is the file that we're actually going to take a look at out, output from. All right, so that's the automation. That, that's autogov. That is turning the manual steps of, did I do it? Is it allowed? Um, all of those tedious steps into something that will just run as part of the pipeline. But now it's stuck in your repo. Now it's hard. Every time that a new release happens, you have to go look at that repository to go see what the latest release is and what the uh, status of that release was. Well, wouldn't it be easier if we could centralize this in a location where you could just quickly see what the latest releases have been and what their autogov uh, status ended up being? Well, we've got a great plugin for that. Uh, here on the right, you can see a, a screenshot. We'll take a look at this in our second demo here of what this can look like. So there's a card that has been uh, built out in this plugin that you can include in any of your uh, backstage entities. It will go look at these results from your GitHub repo and give you a quick uh, view over your repository to tell you what the autogov status is on that release. So here you can see four of the latest releases. We've got a pass, great. We fixed everything on the current one. In the last three, not so good. We'll take a look at that a little more in depth as we look at the plugin during the demo. Yeah, we're going to show you how to actually implement that so we can make this a reality and not just a possibility. All right. 
yeah, if you want to scroll right, we'll actually show a really standard out-of-the-box backstage. There's nothing too special. We added a fun little homepage just to welcome you. But if you go to the catalog page, uh, there's nothing necessarily special. This is what you get. Uh, if you go to the entity page for our Hello World app, it's just pretty standard, pretty generic. Uh, we don't get to see any information about that AutoGov status. And so we want to be able to add that release card in on this view so we can get that information here centralized on this page. All right. So we've made it so that it should be pretty easy just to get people access to uh, running this themselves. So it's just a few plugins that we'll add to the front end and the back end. Uh, we have published it out to uh, npm.js, and you should just be able to do a um, import and an add, and we'll be adding that both to the front end and the back end. Uh, the back end is necessary because we have to do a call out to GitHub, and we'll be pulling that attestation, or I'm sorry, the results from the attestation evaluation down, and we'll actually render those results up into Backstage. So Daniel's just showing us all those steps. There's not too many, there's only a couple. Um, so we'll get to add to the entity page, we'll do the release card, and the release card will show us our latest releases, and then it will additionally show us, like on the previous slide, that AutoGov status. Uh, so he'll just be adding that in for a variety of the entities, because you can have uh, a website, uh, you could have an API or a service. So that for our awesome. example, I think we have a, a service. Yes. All right, we crash backstage. <laughs> uh, did we do a yarn install? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Simple things. Did you have those copied somewhere? Uh, we can just switch to main. You know main Let's... will let us just spit it up because it has it already added. Um, but we did cut a branch just so we could show you just adding it on uh, for this demo sake. But you know how demos are. There we go. All right. All those steps I just uncommented. Uh, Live on, live on main. All right, we're back. Awesome. So now that we've added it, we should be able to go to the catalog page, and we get a new column. It's uh, all the way on the right, and this is our AutoGov status, and it'll go and grab the latest releases results file and render the result if it's pass fail or if it's missing, it'll say NA. And then if there isn't uh, an AutoGov uh, pipeline configured, we won't see anything. Uh, what we also get is at the bottom left, we have a filter for AutoGov status. So we can filter for uh, passed or failed if we had any failing latest. For this, we only have one repo, so we're limited on inventory. But this allows people to create a view here of only compliant repositories by their latest release, uh, or even just configured AutoGov. Uh, so this is really powerful for the developers who are trying to find reusable code that is within compliance for the company so that they can have peace of mind, they don't have to worry about uh, should I or should I not be using this? Uh, and we can go into the actual entity. And then if we scroll down, this is where we get that release card. And we'll get the latest, I think we have four on the screen. And uh, if it's passed, we won't see any of those failed policies. But if there is a failure, what we get is for each rule that was written, we'll get a message if we hover over that to tell us what went wrong. Why did it fail? That way, uh, people can get immediate feedback of like, oh, maybe um, they'll have to go update their pipeline next, or maybe this is a reason I shouldn't be using it if it's failing particular rules. Uh, another nice feature is there is a search for the um, releases. So if you're trying to find one that's the latest one that passed, you can do that, or the latest one that failed if you really want to. Um, so this should 
help people find uh, for a repo that has AutoGov configured the latest passing, and I mean failing if you really want. But it should be really that easy. Add the plugins, make sure AutoGov is configured, and you've registered that uh, repo to Backstage. Awesome. All right, that is why centralized auto governance is awesome. Um, as Amber just mentioned, we can now, as a development team that's looking for internal libraries and services uh, that our company has made, go and find these uh, services and use them with great confidence that they have been verified uh, against the, the company's standards and uh, easy to uh, to implement. Yeah. yeah, so AutoGov should really make everybody's lives easier, and that includes self-discovery. And Backstage is the place for code self-service discovery, and compliance information should be on display for those registered repositories. So you saw the plugins. Uh, those are actually available today. Uh, we're going to show a QR code here in a moment. If you are interested in those, you can uh, go to the repository. Uh, it's actually a little markdown landing page and the repository for the out of the box backstage that we just showed you, as well as the plugin uh, repositories are linked there. Um, this is all about automation. How do we speed up the developer's life cycle? How do we move compliance and security left, allowing the developers to get faster feedback into what they are building, how it's going to work, whether it's reusable, whether it's compliant, uh, and, and just overall making the developers experience that much more enjoyable, knowing that their work, their hard work has been uh, made visible to the entire company. Um, now backstage can be hard uh, if, if you have uh, any questions about Backstage, I'd love to have you come uh, talk with us. We do, on the QR code, have a contact page if you would like to hear more or ask us other questions about Backstage. Uh, with that, that's what we've got. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, any questions? That is the <laughs> QR code. Feel free to scan that. Again, those repositories are there. Um, any questions? One in the back. There we go. I got you. Hey there. Um, I was kind of wondering if you could give some example of the policies that you're enforcing and also how those are defined and maybe how they're different from, you know, just common pipeline actions like did your configuration validate? Did your, does your TypeScript compile those, those sorts of things? Sure. Um, this was something we debated a little bit about being at BackstageCon, how far do we go into the, the AutoGov side of it. So the pipeline that was used to uh, create these attestations do have some different checks around the security scans and those sorts of things. The hard part there is we can show you some of it. Uh, probably best to do after the fact because hard to, to show uh, in depth. But it really depends on what your company's compliance is, right? If, if there's a a certain security scanner that your tools must go through uh, before they can go to production, that's what you need to build your policies around and that's what you need to build your attestations toward, right? Um, so happy to show you afterward, but a little hard to show on the screen. Thank you very much. Other questions? Any other questions? All right. Well, there's a couple more QR codes for you. That's uh, Amber's LinkedIn profile, my LinkedIn profile. Again, please reach out. Let us know if you would like to talk more about Backstage and plugins. Thank you all.